Claude Code has almost 3 million downloads a week, and after using it for a month, I understand why. While everyone is arguing about whether Cursor or Windsurf is better, Anthropic quietly released a command line tool that makes the whole debate irrelevant. Cloud Code is not trying to be your editor. It is not trying to replace anything. It just sits in your terminal and helps you code better. Today, I will show you how this seemingly minimalistic tool can be so powerful. First, I will walk you through exactly how it works and how to configure it to maximize your productivity. Then, I will share with you a bunch of my favorite workflows, recipes, and hidden features that will turn you into a cloud power user. The best part is that cloud works with any editor you already use. VS Code, Sublime, Cursor, Xcode, Z, whatever. You don't have to change your workflow at all. Let's get started. First, let's install Cloud Code. If you already have Node.js installed, it's just one command. Once installed, the first thing you will want to do is to run the terminal setup. This gives you shift enter for new lines, which makes typing longer prompts much easier. Next, set your team. It is tempting to immediately ask Cloud Code to start building features, but there is a better way to start. First, run the slash init command. This automatically generates a cloud.md file that helps Cloud understand your project. Now that we have Cloud Code set up, let's see what it can do. Start by asking questions about your code base. This is the best way to familiarize yourself with Cloud Code and how powerful it can be. Here, I am asking Cloud to look through my Git history as well as my code base and give me a detailed explanation of how my project is structured. Structure. And here's what makes Cloud Code so powerful. It has access to your entire code base and Git commits. It can also run any bash commands to get any information it needs. This is a huge advantage over copy-pasting code snippets in ChatGPT or other chat window. Cloud Code explores your project on its own to understand the full picture. And if you care about privacy, the best part is that there is no indexing. Your code stays local. Nothing gets uploaded anywhere. Now, let's move on from questions to actually editing code. For example, you could ask Cloud Code to add a doc string to all the functions and classes in your code base, which is an annoying task to do manually but that Cloud Code is perfectly capable to do. When Cloud tries to edit files, you will see it ask for permission first. You have three options when prompted. Yes, allow this one time. Yes, and don't ask again for the whole session. And no, and you can tell Cloud what to do instead. Cloud Code requests permissions before taking any action that may modify your system, like editing files, running commands, and even fetching websites. After I approve it, Cloud Code will edit the files and you can see the changes in the terminal. If you find yourself constantly approving the same tools, you can use the slash permissions command to manage your allow list, so Cloud Code doesn't ask for permission every time. Here you can see that I am allowing it to always use the web fetch tool, and I'm also being asked where I want this rule to be saved. If I save it in my projects.cloud folder as settings.local.json, this rule will apply to this project only, and the file will be ignored by Git. If I save it in the same location but without local, the rule will apply to this project, and it will be checked into Git and shared with the team. And if I save it in my home directory, the rule will apply for all projects. Before I show you some of my favorite workflows and how to create custom commands, let's talk about the cloud.md file. The slash init command we ran earlier created a cloud.md file in your project folder. And this is where things get really cool. Cloud.md is like leaving notes for Cloud about your project. Every time you start a conversation, Cloud reads this file first, so it knows your preferences. I put things like how I like my code formatted, common commands I use in this project, which files are important, and coding patterns that I prefer. The file doesn't have a specific format. Just write it like you're explaining your project to a new team member. You can put Cloud.md files in your project so that Cloud reads it for that specific project or in your home directory, which applies to every project you work on. Pro tip. While in Cloud, you can press the pound key, and Cloud would automatically add whatever you tell it to the Cloud MD file. It is super useful to document commands and patterns as you discover them. Let's talk about pulling context when you need it. To do so, all you have to do is use the add symbol for files or whole directories. And here's a hidden feature. Cloud Code supports image uploads. All you have to do is drag and drop an image into the terminal while pressing shift to upload it. You can also paste URLs on the terminal, and Cloud Code will read their content and use it as context. Cloud Code has three modes, and knowing when to use which one will make you much more productive. Default mode, auto-accept mode, and plan mode. To switch between modes, you can press the Shift-Tab 
key. The default mode is the one where Claude will ask you for your approval before editing files. The auto accept edit mode is useful when you want Claude code to automatically edit files without asking you for your approval every time. And the plan mode is useful when you don't want Claude code to immediately start writing code. You want it to think through the problem first, brainstorm solutions, create a plan before diving in. This is especially useful for complex features or when you are not 100% sure of the implementation approach. This has saved me from so many wrong implementations where Claude would have built something completely different from what I had in mind. Another cool feature is that you can queue up multiple messages and Claude code will process them in order. Like here where I ask to do one thing and then what is working on that, I ask to do another and then another. Sometimes Claude code goes in the wrong direction and your instinct as a programmer is to press Ctrl C. Don't do that. It will kill the program. Instead, press the escape key. One press of the escape key will stop Claude code and two will allow you to jump to a previous message and fork the conversation. Claude code has a bunch of slash commands that you can explore on your own time. But some of the ones I use the most often are slash clear that clears the conversation history, useful when the conversation gets too long and you have moved on to a new topic or feature slash model that allows you to change the model you are using so you can choose to always use opus if you want to always use the most powerful model just be careful because opus reaches limits faster and slash compact that clears the conversation history but it keeps a summary of it in the context these slash commands are great but the best slash commands are the ones you create to create your own slash commands which you definitely should just create markdown files in your projects.cloud slash commands directory these become available through the slash command menu when you type slash. For example, if I create a file called document.md in the commands directory to tell Claude to document the code with comments, it will become available as slash project colon documents. The cool part is that custom commands can include arguments. Just use monisign arguments in your command and pass parameters when you invoke it. So I could type project document graph.py just like that and Claude code will automatically find the graph file, analyze what it does and write comprehensive documentation for it. This turns workflows into single commands. You can have commands for adding error handling, for writing commit messages, creating pull requests. Basically, any task you do more than twice should become a command. Also, if you put commands in your home.cloud slash command folder, they become globally accessible across all your projects. Slash commands sound cool, but the truth is that they are just prompts that you can save and reuse. Let me show you three commands I use every day. First is my cleanup command. The prompt is something like look through the arguments files and clean clean up any leftover debug logs, commented code, or unused imports. Second is my explain command. Explain how arguments works as if I am a new developer on the team. Show me the execution flow and usage example. And the third is my review command. Review the arguments code for bugs, security problems, and performance issues. Be specific about what could go wrong. Cloud code is already incredibly powerful with these built-in tools. But what if you could extend it further with MCP servers? Remember those MCP servers from my previous video? Cloud code supports them natively, which means you can connect to databases, control browsers, integrate with Notion, and so much more. Here's me adding the famous Context7 MCP server so that Cloud Code can always access the freshest documentation. And here is me using it to get the latest documentation for Langgraph, for example. Now that you know all these features, let me share some workflow recipes you will love. Since, as I keep saying, Cloud Code lives in your terminal, it means it can run any CLI tool in your system as long as it knows how to use it. If I wanted Cloud Code to learn how to use Playwright, for example, I will tell it to run the command playwright dash dash help. Now Cloud can use Playwright to check its own work. Perfect for building UIs. Watch this. I give Claude an image of a UI design. It builds it and then uses Playwright to screenshot and iterate until it matches perfectly. If you give Claude code a tool to check its work, whether it's a tool to take screenshots or run tests, it will automatically iterate and improve until it gets it right. Now, if you want an even better experience, there are Cloud Code extensions for VS Code and Cursor that you can install. All they do is enhance the user experience. Like for example, you can launch Cloud Code with a click on a separate panel. The code divs will be shown using your editor and not the terminal. And when you highlight lines of code, Cloud Code will know about it. The last thing I want to show you is about resume 
streaming conversations. You don't have to start from scratch every time. Cloud Code has two powerful options. Use dash dash continue to automatically continue your most recent conversation or use dash dash resume to see all your previous conversations and pick which one to continue. This is perfect when you're working on a feature across multiple days. Just resume where you left off and Cloud Code remembers all the context from before. I hope you found this video useful and let me know what you think about Cloud Code in the comments below. Are you using Cloud Code? Will you use it? Do you have any favorite custom commands? Let me know. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. See you in the next one. Bye bye.